According to Russian channels on Telegram, a popular social messaging platform, the plane was an Embraer legacy jet with the serial number RA0795, which is linked to the Wagner boss. BBC Verify has examined the plane's flight tracking data via the Flightradar 20 for website. While the data does not show where the flight departed from, the plane did appear to travel close to Moscow. After it climbed to nearly 29,000 feet, no further data was recorded. Flight records show the same plane made several journeys to and from Moscow and St. Petersburg. In recent months, it has also been pictured by local media in Belarus, where Wagner is now thought to be based. However, there has also been speculation on Telegram that Prigozhin may have been on a different flight altogether. This other jet has a registration number, RA0748. While the plane's flight records are partially inaccessible, it appears this plane departed from St. Petersburg earlier on Wednesday and flew towards Moscow. The trail disappears near Ostafyevo Airport in the Russian capital. Both Yevgeny Prigozhin and the commander of his Wagner forces are listed among the passengers on the private jet that came down in a burst of flames in central Russia. Telegram groups linked to the mercenaries have confirmed and are mourning the men's deaths, which they blame on what they call traitors of Russia. We still don't know what caused the crash, but we do know the Embraer jet has an excellent safety record and in Russia. Few will think it simply fell out of the sky because ever since Prigozhin led an armed mutiny in June sending Wagner forces marching. On Moscow, the assumption has been that he would pay for humiliating Vladimir Putin, making him seem weak. Whatever the facts of the crash, and we may never know them. In Russia, many will interpret what's happened as a brutal and dramatic reassertion of control. Ukraine's defense ministry says the Wagner fighters now based in Belarus have started to form convoys and may be preparing to leave the country. However, it is citing an unnamed Belarusian guerrilla force and Ukraine's government often circulate stories focusing on purported infighting within Russian forces. Belarus state outlets have reported on Wagner, but only anodyne information of fighters training Belarusian forces. They firmly tow the government line and are unlikely to publish anything illuminating. The most reliable eyes on the ground are likely to be from the open source intelligence project, Belaruski Han, which often backs its claims with multimedia evidence. It says it has not observed anything to confirm the claim of Wagner fighters mobilizing to leave. It has pointed out, however, that a Russian aerospace forces transport aircraft landed in Belarus Michulishi military airfield near the Tsel camp last night, shortly after reports of the plane crash, and that people reported a lack of internet availability in the camp vicinity. All this only adds another layer of likely spin or filter to watch for. On any information that emerges, many people are closely watching the several thousand Wagner fighters based in pro-Kremlin Belarus to see how they react. But it is not easy finding reliable information on them. On Telegram, Wagner link channels have mourned their commander's deaths but put out no other information about what happens next. This is expected. Given they usually publish propaganda burnishing the group's intimidating reputation and exaggerating its reach, there are other Russian Telegram channels that publish information about the group, but which have no observable link to it. So some claims circulating, for example, that Wagner has initiated a backup plan for its leader's deaths cannot be trusted. Prigozhin had many enemies, and many people in various parts of the world might have had a sign of relief over his reported death. Former Kremlin policy advisor Andrei Kortunov told BBC Radio 4's World at one program. A bit earlier, he added that many people considered Prigozhin a factor of instability. When asked whether he believed the Kremlin ordered Prigozhin's assassination, he said Putin made a very clear promise not to go after Prigozhin and definitely defenders. Of Mr. Putin would say he usually stands by the personal promises that he makes. Asked whether Prigozhin could still be alive, Kortunov said, we cannot rule out any version of what's happened. But he added that he was skeptical of conspiracy theories and we don't have enough information to make any conclusions. Asked about the stability of Putin's regime, Kortunov said, it's hard to tell. But I assume the system still has a margin of safety. Adding that the economy was not as desperate as experts predicted. And the opposition is not that powerful. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and the First Lady Elena Zelenska spent this morning paying their respects 
to the Ukrainians who have lost their lives in the nine years of Russia.